Welcome! I'm Luiden, and this is my Stance to Devlog, where I ramble for a few minutes on what I'm working on. Today I was commissioned a behavior for 360 degrees aiming with the analog sticks, and I decided to record the process and make a video out of it. The voiceover was recorded after behavior was completed, and I don't have a set script as I usually do for my tutorials. Let's get started. So for starters I like to write down all the attributes I think I will need and my general plan of action. You can pause the video if you need time to read everything I wrote down here. Uh, I also wrote down all the input codes for the right analog stick and they will come in handy in a bit. So create an actor behavior, give it a name, don't mistype it. Okay, so the idea is that the get pressure of control block will return a number between 0 and 1 depending on how far you have the analog stick pushed. So the combined pressure of the up and down axis and the right, the vertical and horizontal axis will make a right triangle, which has 190 degrees angle and the sum of its three angles make uh, 180 degrees. And you can use a bunch of trigono all the trigonometry functions with that type of triangle. So I'll use the horizontal pressure and vertical pressure to make the adjacent side and opposite side to the angle I want. Find out which trigonometry function I need to discover that, ang that angle. And with that I can make my actor face the angle of the analog stick, pretty much. Uh, the analog stick will be bound to four direction keys, and that's what I'm doing right now, setting up the map attribute for that. Uh, for ease of use for future users, I made that print gamepad input boolean, so that you can quickly check the input code for your gamepads. The input codes should be consistent across all gamepads, I tested all this with a DualShock 4 controller. But, uh, but as I said, uh, that plus axis 2, minus axis 2 are all related to the same right analog stick and all controllers. And here I'm binding those input codes to the four direction controls. Otherwise I can't test this at all. Uh, one thing I'll have to say is that I edited out all the compile times, most of the compile times and the time I spent researching this subject. I learned trigonometry many many years ago and I, had the no I have the knowledge to look it up what I need but I don't have it readily available. But as long as you know what to look for you can easily remember it. So like that I'm retrieving all the values from that map attribute I created and binding them to those keys. Now, on the beginning stages, I need to confirm first that the get pressure for control block actually does what I think it does. And attaching the behavior to my actor and setting it all up. For the record, I won't get everything right at the first time. I will make a lot of mistakes along the way. Uh, well, as you can see, I'm printing the pressure on the game controller and you can see from a previous compile that I used the, in the print input code to get the actual values for the right analog stick. Right, so one means the analog is pushed all the way when it has a bunch of decimal points, it's midway, and zero means I have released the analog. I'm only testing the right direction. So that confirms that's how it works. And with that, we can continue working. Now, at this stage, I'm thinking I need to calculate the hypotenuse of that triangle I mentioned. 
which will turn out to be a red herring. I don't actually need that. Spoilers. So I'll now actually set up the logic of the, of the behavior. I will separate the horizontal value and the vertical value into two number attributes. And at this first stage, I will only work with one quadrant of the analog. So if you think of the analog stick as a circle and divided in four, my first idea is to only work with the first 90 degrees on the bottom right corner. As an angle zero is always pointing right, and positive numbers on stencil are always to the right and on the x-axis and down on the y-axis. So by only using the larger of either the right or left keys and the larger of either the up or down keys, I'm limiting to only one quadrant. Now actually solving this problem with the whole analog will come later in the video. And as I said, here is me calculating the hypotenuse. At this point I still think I'm actually gonna need it. I'll also set up drawings for all the values I'm calculating, so it's easier to check in-game instead of checking the game controller or the log viewer. And apologies for those who are aware of the, all the stencil shortcuts. I never learned them, so I use a lot of right-clicking, duplicating, copying and pasting. Well, they'll get around to learning all the shortcuts. Anyway, here's the first big edit. Uh, the compile times usually take one minute or so. And here I messed up the spacing of the drawings, but as you can see, it's calculating everything, it's displaying everything properly. And here I'm fixing the spacing to better see all the values. Now I took a lot of uh, time, I had another page open with all the explanations of what I needed to do, so I knew the logic behind it, I knew the operations, I just needed to translate that into stencil. And that was the actual uh, challenge of this behavior. And analog angle will be the actual attribute with the proper angle after all the calculations are done. So we'll use a trigonometry function and at first I was thinking I need the sine or cosine using the hypotenuse and one of the sides, but then as I researched the subject I figured out I actually need the tangent of the division of the other two sides, so the adjacent side and the opposite side. Well, not actually tangent, I need the inverse of the tangent. So I had a bit of a, tr a problem trying to translate that inverse into blocks, because that is usually uh, shown in textbooks, I believe, it actually reads 10 to the power of minus 1 and between parentheses the value you want. But in programming it's actually called, well it's display a10 
a sine in a cosine for the inverse function. So I had a little bit of a problem trying to figure that one out. I also had the drawing for the analog angle, because that's what matters anyway. So that's where that minus one part comes into play. I was thinking I had to to the power of minus one something at some point. But midway through the compile I figure out, okay, that's completely wrong, that won't work, I don't even have to bother. But the compile already started, so I had to go through with it. And then I figure out A10 is the actual operation I want, well, the operation I thought I wanted. So that's the new setup. Now that was a big problem, the degrees slash radians. That refers to what you what you put inside the trigonometry function block. But the numbers I'm using are the sides of the triangle, so they are neither degrees nor radians. So I spent a bit of a time testing, playing with the analog to see if I get anything. What I'm looking for is an analog number between 0 and 19. So that, so that will mean I got a proper angle that I can work with. So as you can see, I'm definitely not getting there. So I tried radians as well and that won't make any difference. Now there I got some sort of idea that I'll need to convert to degrees at some point. So as you can see here, setting to radians didn't do a thing. So at this point I decided, well, the example I'm using is getting the inverse tangent of 0 0.5 and that should give me a result of 30. So if I'm right, I should get a value of 30 at some point if I use that number. But I'm still on the I'm on the right track but using the wrong methods, basically. As you can see, I'm not getting 30 as I expect. So now I'm looking into all the blocks, I'm looking for something, anything that might lead me in the right direction. And I finally grabbed the A10-2 block, which is actually the one we need. So I already set it up as I know that is what it, what's that's what I need to do. Uh, that compiles, so it's just a waste of time. Now the issue right now is that that block returns radians instead of degrees. So... Not quite there yet. But since I'm already aware that the problem is the unit I'm using, It's just a matter of converting into degrees, and that should do the trick. And at that moment I figure, well, hypotenuse is useless, might, might as well get it out of the code. And there we have it. Numbers between 0 and 90. So that's something we can work with.
deleting the hypotenuse attribute, since that's completely useless. Well, now that we got one quadrant uh, done, I now have to think how I'm gonna work with the whole 360 degrees of the analog input. So I spent some time thinking, how am, I, how am I gonna tackle that? And sometimes when I stuck on something, I procrastinate by doing something related to it. So I wanted to add debug functions, so while I stuck with that, I'm organizing everything in the, my proper, my usual debug setup. Uh, I usually add a boolean, I can simply toggle, toggle on and off to activate the debug drawings, select a font and a position to draw. Uh, in this case, I'll draw the debug relative uh, on the actor space relative to the actor. And as you, yeah, as you saw before even with the other attributes, I'm setting up the default values. Uh, this is mostly for... Sometimes you don't need to change the attribute values in most cases. And here is to show the, the proper formatting. So it's the X position and the Y position separated by a comma. So right now I'm setting up the getter for the position. So if you use the split text using separator block, you generate a list on the spot. Since I, as I mentioned, I'm using X position, comma, Y position, I separate that to attribute, split that, added that attribute with a comma, and treat that as an item. So I get item zero for the X position, and item one for the Y position. Since I have many attributes to draw, I'll actually draw each one uh, using the height of the current font as the distance between them. So the X position should be constant. And the first one is drawn at the Y position. The second one is drawn at the Y position plus height. And the third one is at plus height position times two. If I had one more, it would be times three and so on and so forth. So that was a misclick. I hit the debug boolean by accident. So when I reload the actor, which I know there's a shortcut, uh, there, I check the wrong boolean. So next time I compile, I won't have any drawing, I'll have to recompile. Bit of a waste of time, no big deal. So I like to use comment blocks to put landmarks on my code and also to make some notes on what I need to do. And right now I'm typing in the, what I explained before about having to work on the 360 degrees angle instead of just 90. Well, turns out, turns out I got a compilation error because I forgot to set up the actual font we'll be using. So in that case, I can just click the error message and the problem block would be highlighted. So that was just it. My bad. And I actually adding the set drawing to screen layer, that will make the drawings for this behavior go on top of everything, basically. Also starting set up the automatic face in the angle of the analog, so the actor will spin towards the angle of the analog. And here I notice, oh right, the boolean is false, what's the problem? And then I notice, oh what, the boolean isn't here, what's up with that? Then I figured it is hidden, gotta reload the actor. And here I'm checking the collision because I know that once I want I start rotating that actor, a circle isn't a proper um, well a spinning circle won't actually tell me what, which direction it's facing, so you will eventually need to make something for that.
and at this point I figured might as well use all the compiling times to actually start typing in all the descriptions of the attributes. There's a lot of downtime when you have to compile your game when you're testing a lot basically, so I like to use that time doing other stuff. So either I'm writing the description of attributes or I'm writing documentation, working on graphics. That's better than just waiting. Of course, sometimes you have nothing better to do uh, other than contemplate life and hope that Stencil thinks you're worthy of a working code. But it is what it is. Writing the description of the attributes is actually pretty useful, so you can reference uh, them later, know what you're actually used for. So in case you ever need to revisit your behavior, like after a long time, you can quickly reference those descriptions, so you won't be starting from zero, basically. Now that I'm done with the descriptions, I actually have to tackle the problem at, problem at hand. And at this point I remember, uh, there is a setup I use for 8-weight for eight movement, in which you subtract the, a boolean block, checking if the right key is pressed, which if converted to a number becomes 1 if the key is pressed, and 0 if the key is not pressed. So pretty much the same as the pressure for control block. And subtract from the left input. Because on stencil positive numbers are always right and down, I subtract the right input from the left input and the down input from the up input, which means that if the horizontal value is positive, the analog is to the right, and if it's negative, it's to the left. And by that same idea, on the vertical, ac vertical axis, if it's positive, it's the analog down, and it's, if it's negative, the analog is up. This time during the compiling, I'm starting to set up the autoface angle, which will point the actor towards the angle of the analog. Pretty simple, really. Now, as you can see, I'm actually getting angles up to 180. And the navigative numbers will actually work, it just means it's going counterclockwise. So an angle of minus 90 will, would actually point upwards. Now, as you can see, I, I had a paint trying out the idea. And I actually need to make a graphic pointing to the right, so that would be the zero pointing to zero degrees, so that we can actually see a proper rotation. So 
also a little, little detour to update our actor. And I figured an arrow called green circle wouldn't be... might rub some people off, so let's fix that real quick. I remember to check the boolean I created to face the angle. And let's see the result. Here I actually start setting up the custom block. My initial thought is to retur just return the angle we calculated. That will change pretty quickly when we actually get to work on this custom block. So for now I'm just setting something up so I won't forget. And as I said, using the compile time to work on the description of the behavior of the attributes is actually a good use of your time. And now we can see our actor rotating to the proper angle. And here you see nev negative angles work just fine. Now one of the problems I'm noticing here is that as soon as I release the analog, the right analog stick, it points to the, it points to the right. Well, since all the values are zero, the angle is set to zero, so it points to that angle. Now usually you'd want your actor to, your character to stay faced in the position you left it as you release the analog. So that's what we'll be working on next. And here I'm making a note of this exact problem. Now, my first idea is to check only if both values are, are not zero, uh, it will point to the analog angle. The problem with that approach is that if one of the values, either horizontal or vertical, is zero, regardless of the other value, this check won't pass. So here I'm checking indi individually if the value is not zero and if the vertical value is not zero. What I actually need to check is if not, both horizontal and vertical are not zero. And I make use of this compile time to start adding an option for analog sensitivity, which is a percentage value you can set up so that any input below that threshold won't be recognized, so you can create dead zones for the analog. And on this compile, you can already see the problem. So as I'm thinking about the problem at hand, I renamed the initially what I initially called dead zone to analog sensitivity to match the name of the actual block. And type in the description since I already started.
Now at this point I needed what I had to do. I was just a bit tired and was taking some time to actually think. think reading the code and seeing the sequence of events and why it was acting the way it was. But at this point I figured, well, I know what I have to do, even if I'm too tired to actually make sense out of, make sense of it. We only want to set the make our actor point towards the angle if both horizontal and vertical values are not equal to zero. Now, angle adjustment is... Um, well, a lot of people set up their graphics facing up, so if you imagine a vertical shooter, you make your ship facing up. The problem is, uh, if you don't rotate your actor at all, it will always be pointing at zero degrees, which is to the right. It, it's, it will be its actual angle. So in the event that you want your actor to rotate, but its default graphics are pointing upwards, it will actually be pointing 90 degrees off all the time. So that angle adjustment number is actually uh, in there in case you have graphics set up that way. So you can just add or subtract 90 degrees from it to have it properly aligned, so to speak. And you actually noted that I typed in the descri description, set the default value, well, I left it at zero actually, uh, create the attribute, and I forgot to actually, what I want to do is add that, add angle, add analog angle to that angle adjustment. Uh, by the end of it, I'll have it fixed. And here I completely forgot I'm working with the analog and not the mouse and I try to rotate with the mouse. So that's the level of tired I am at that point. Now here the analog is act acting a bit weird and that's because I'm setting the analog sensitivity to zero. I'm not sure if that's a bug and I'll investigate that a bit further and post on the issue tracker if that's indeed the case. But for now I can just make an exception that if the analog sensitivity is zero, I will only set the analog sensitivity if it's not equal to zero, basically. And I know there is a not equal block but I just prefer to use a NOT and then an equal block just because of the order I read stuff. So I read NOT analog stick equals zero. J it's just preference. And now it's moving properly. It's always fun to play around a bit when you actually make something uh, and your behavior is working as you expect. Here I am actually testing what happens when you have the analog at neutral and then go to any position. Uh, it actually snaps to the position, which is kind of expected. And there's not really much I'm willing to do regarding that. I could set up an automatic rotation instead of that abrupt shift, but I don't think it's worth the effort, for now, at least. Now the bulk of the behavior is done, we can get to the custom block. As I said, my original idea was just to return the angle we calculated. But as I was typing in the parameters in the description, I thought, well, most controllers have two analog sticks. So I could just make the custom block accept four controls and calculate the angle directly. So regardless of what you set in this behavior, you can use the custom block to get the angle for either the left or analog sticks. Or even the trigger buttons if you 
managed to make some sense out of it. So here I'm setting four parameters, uh, which are controls for each direction. And as you can see there, reference for block spec field, you type in percentage and the number, and that will translate into uh, a field for that parameter you created. So here when I type percentage 1, when the block is created, that will appear a parameters to set the control for up in the custom block. And lastly, percent zero refers to self for the actor you're targeting. Um, and here, since I already have the logic all set up, I just copy and paste and use that as reference. So while I set up the attributes as I was working on it, we actually don't need any attribute, well, number attribute at all for this calculation since you can just replace them with the actual operations we were doing and since that custom block returns a number forgot to say that you can just use the return block and put our operation there so when you use that custom block you get the proper angle and here I'm updating the description of the block And last but not least, typing in the description of the behavior, which is useful to tell what it does and what you can use it for. I usually uh, type in the description of the behavior any triggers that I set up to interact with this behavior. And at this point, I notice I don't have any triggers, and I'm thinking, if there's anything I can add for quick interactions. And turns on there is. I set up two quick custom events just to change the state of the automatic facing to true or false so that if at any point you want the player to stop controlling the angle of your actor you can just call that trigger and that's it. Using custom events for this are a great way to expand the use of your behavior without you having to actually open it and make changes to it. Now, after I was done with this behavior, I actually kept working a little bit on it, uh, fixing a few blocks I forgot, and I actually added a mouse facing option. So the same behavior can be used both with analog controls, with the analog stick, and with a mouse. And here is the code of the completed behavior. That's it for this devlog. I'm already working on including analog angle options for the behaviors in my resource packs as well. I'll leave a link on the description of this video to a thread in the Stencil forums where you can download this behavior. 
You can also find a link to my YouTube page, where you can get all my extensive resources, as well as to my Twitter, where you can get regular updates on what I'm currently working on. Leave a comment if you have any questions, or to let me know what you thought of this video, and subscribe for more stencil content. Thank you so much for watching!